was working the night shift at my local gas station in southern Texas in late 2010, and I was just there trying to keep myself awake with a hot cup of coffee. There was a light rain hitting the windows beside me, and I could see the trees moving with the wind. As I was taking glances towards said windows and back down at my phone, I happened to hear someone enter the store. It's a guy wearing a dark blue hoodie with the hood over his head, and he immediately went to the back of the store, presumably to grab some food or drink. Although to some that might be suspicious, a lot of younger kids and teenagers that entered my gas station are dressed that way, so I wasn't really one to judge yet. Anyway, since there was nothing to do, I did keep an eye on him through the surveillance camera as best as I could, but then I lose sight of him as he's in a spot the camera's view won't reach. At this moment, I ended up getting a customer wearing a cowboy hat who walked in to ask me to put $40 on one of the pumps. And just so you know, the only people inside the building are myself, this man who is paying for his gas, and the guy in the hoodie that is somewhere in the store. Mr. Cowboy Hat Man talked to me for about a minute. If I remember correctly, it was something about football. But we are interrupted when I see the guy in the hoodie walking up from behind the cowboy hat man. He points a handgun up behind the cowboy hat man, and then tells both of us to do exactly as he says, and nobody is going to get hurt. Naturally, I froze in place as my immediate reaction was, Oh my god, I'm not going to see my family ever again. But if this creep did keep to his word, we should be safe. Not that you should really believe a criminal. Well, I do as he says. I mean, what else could I do? As Cowboy Hat Man backs up to the side, and now the gunman walks over to me, pointing the gun in my face, and now he demands I start emptying the cash register. I'm doing this nice and slowly, but what's unbeknown to me is that Cowboy Hat Man is also carrying a gun as well. You see, this gunman had taken one too many seconds of his attention away from him, because without even getting a single word out, Cowboy Hat Man pulls out a gun and shoots the bad guy until he falls to the ground. Adrenaline and tensions were running at an all-time high as Cowboy Hat Guy kicks the gun away and tells me to grab it and then dial for 911. I still remember I could hear the guy on the ground gargling blood and a pool of said blood beginning to form as another customer comes into the store. It was an older woman and she almost passes out from the violent scene that was presented in front of her. I can't blame her. A man is lying on the floor with bullet holes and blood spreading everywhere. Long story short, the cops would arrive and after questioning myself and the other witnesses, including the cowboy hat guy, my boss arrived and he excused me for the rest of the shift. Our gas station would close for a bit while police did investigations. And at the end of the day, I did my best to move forward. Though, when you see a violent event of somebody getting shot, and then blood coming out of them right before your very own eyes, it does change you. And in case you wanted to know, the gunman did not survive his injuries, and it also turned out he was a violent felon. Anyway, as for Cowboy Hat Man, he was not charged with the shooting. And I would see him a couple of more times a month throughout the next year I worked at that gas station. He was a really cool dude, but like any other part-time job, I did eventually move forward in life and I lost touch with him. Today, I'm now a small business owner and I employ 10 incredible employees. And thus, that is the end to my email. I hope my story can fit in a future episode of the Creepy Fox podcast. I do love listening to your videos, Creepy Fox. And even a couple of my employees just recently started to binge watch your content as well. Anyway, keep up the great work. And I look forward to hearing more Scary Stories videos. So, I was on a road trip in the late 1990s with my wife. And we had stopped somewhere in New Mexico to take a break and get a motel. Normally, we just slept inside the car in a rest area. But as this was in the winter time, it was too cold to stay out there. After all, it was just a really cheap motel that we stayed in, but it did the job, so no worries. Well, I, for whatever reason, was having a really tough time getting sleep. Anyone else have that where you just toss and turn and try as hard as you can? You close your eyes and nothing? 
Well, I decided to pace around the motel room a little bit, but I accidentally woke up my wife, who gets really cranky anytime she's interrupted from her sleep. I told her of my trouble sleeping, and I said I was going to head outside and even perhaps head over to the gas station for a little bit. She gets back to sleep now, and I put a coat on and head down to the bottom floor. We were on the second floor, and this is one of those motels where you can just walk up to any of the rooms. Anyway, I did actually decide to go to that gas station as I figured I could pick up some snacks for the following day on our road trip. So I enter the little store at about midnight and it's empty in there apart from the gas station attendant who I remembered looked super angry but I think it was more so he was bored and just wanted to go home. I didn't blame him. Anyway, I grabbed us some Lay's chips, some candy bars and some sodas and then I began heading over to the front counter. However, I don't make it that far down the aisle because all of a sudden I heard the front door open and then there is a gunshot. I quickly drop down to the floor as I look up ahead of me and there is a chunky looking man in a ski mask who is telling the cashier to begin emptying the cash register not to try anything funny. I wanted to do something in myself in those moments but what could I do? It's not like I had a gun on me to take this criminal out. Well, as I'm hiding there shaking, I am shocked when another gunman, I guess one of his accomplices, finds me and then tells me to be quiet that I was not going to be hurt if I cooperated with them. I did the only thing I could think of. I sit there shaking trying to hold back tears and thinking of my wife. I mean, I might not have ever seen her again and this could have been where I met my demise. Well, after what seems like an eternity, the first guy at the cash register signals to the guy who has me held at gunpoint that it's time to leave. The second guy looks at me one last time and I think this is it but instead he now books it out the front door and I peek through the window as they get into an awaiting van. They then drove off. Well, I don't have any shame in saying that even as an adult male who thinks he's a tough shot, I started shaking uncontrollably and crying like no tomorrow but I believe these were also my emotions that finally caught up to me. To my surprise, my wife would come over to the gas station as well as others who were staying at the motel since they had heard the gunshots and got worried. My wife ran over because I had told her I was going to be there and she had gotten so scared that something had happened to me. Yeah, a wife risking it all to go into the danger zone to look for her husband? True love, I'll tell you that. Anyway, the police will later get to the area about 30 minutes later and I did end up giving a statement to the best of my ability. But to this day, I have no idea what happened to those criminals and I don't remember exactly which gas station it was since this was so long ago. I just remember it being in southern New Mexico. Maybe those who live in that state might have more information if you were around at the time or maybe you remember a news story relating to this. I have tried to find more information, but as of yet, no luck. I was traveling with my family in the state of Guanajuato and we had stopped by a gas station to fill up on fuel. There is also an OXO attached to this gas station. OXO was kind of similar to 7-Eleven in the United States, if you want to make that comparison. Anyway, this occurred over the summer of 2022. It's around 8 p.m. at night and the streets are relatively calm as my cousins and I enter the little shop to grab some snacks and use the restroom. I ended up being the first to get out of the building out of all the younger kids since they take forever deciding on what snacks they want. I went over to our large van to wait with my dad and my uncle as my aunt and the kids are inside the gas station. However, all of a sudden, I remember this truck with a bunch of armed CJNG cartel members driving up to the gas station and then they start running in our direction. They begin shouting at everyone to get out and saying El Mencho's name as moments after that, my cousins and my aunt are screaming and running out of the store. Some gunshots were heard being fired from inside the store and then about 15 seconds later, we begin to see a small fire begin to ensue. One of the cartel members did run up to me, my dad and my uncle, and told us not to say anything or there was going to be trouble, which we all just stood there and nodded our heads. 
The cartel member then stormed off with the rest of the men who get into the same truck and left. In total, this all happened in about a minute. That was pretty much all that happened to us, but what makes this so much scarier was what we would learn later in the news. In fact, one of the reasons I wanted to share my own scary experience was because of a video the Creepy Fox released last year, the second volume of the Cartel Stories video he did. Another listener sent in a similar story of him being at an OXO when CJNG cartel members ran in and set the place ablaze. What a small world we live in for another Creepy Fox listener to have experienced a similar thing. Anyway, just like what that subscriber described, basically what happened was there were some higher ups in the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, shortened as CJNG, who got arrested, and as revenge, the CJNG members went around lighting gas stations and OXOs on fire. It is scary when you really think about it. Mexico, especially in today's environment and modern age, is experiencing a huge increase of violence with the cartel. I constantly hear about how bad things get in the United States, and it's not to undermine any of it all. That's not my point here. But to go to Mexico, you're going to be in for quite a disturbing reality. None of this really gets talked about, and it's my hopes that stories like mine can hopefully shed some light on the reality of the horrors that we constantly have to deal with. The cartel basically run the country as they're in cahoots with the government and they bribe a lot of police officers to turn a blind eye. Meanwhile, the cartel are free to commit all the crimes they want and sadly a lot of times innocent bystanders get caught up on accident and they get killed. I do highly recommend that if you're going to visit Mexico, do it responsibly. Have someone with you who knows the area you'll be visiting. It's not that cartel members target people visiting the country on purpose, but if you're clueless to where you're going, you might get yourself into an area where you're more likely to get hurt, or even worse, kidnapped. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Just a quick reminder, go ahead and check down below the video and just double check to make sure you're subscribed. I've been getting a lot of comments recently of people telling me that they've been getting unsubscribed from my channel and that they haven't been notified of my uploads. And it's a shame because I know so many of you enjoy these videos, but then you never get notified of my videos because again, YouTube either doesn't notify you or they unsubscribe you. So just double check. But yeah, let's continue on with these scary stories. It was summer break 2014. And at around 1pm, my mom texted me to ask how my day was going, like she normally does. I responded by saying, I'm just relaxing in the room playing some PlayStation with friends. And she then asked if I wanted to do anything later that night. This was Friday, so usually we go out as a family to eat or something. I told her I wasn't sure. And then she responded before returning back to work, saying, Be ready tonight and put a change of clothing in a backpack. Well, what do you know, when my dad gets home, I asked him what my mom was talking about. My dad told me that it was a surprise and I would find out when my mom got home. And so long story short, my mom's boss had booked us a night at the Southern California Harris Casino Resort. We live in Brea, California, so it is quite a drive to get there. But we would be staying overnight, so it wasn't really a big deal. Also, just so you know, this comes from the perspective of an 18-year-old female, if it's of any importance to anyone. Anyway, now with that bit of context out of the way, so you know why we were on the road to begin with, let's get on to the really scary thing that happened to me. We pulled up to a gas station as I drank a lot of water beforehand at a Carl's Jr. And I was the only one to get out since my parents had done the smart thing of going to the restroom at that Carl's Jr. When I was inside the little store, I asked the gas station attendant if the bathroom was free to use or you had to buy something, but he said it's all good, just go in and do your thing. So I made my way down an aisle of chips, being greeted by some random people who were shopping for snacks, and at the end of the walkway I quite literally bumped into a random disheveled looking woman with tattered clothing on. 
She was really skinny and pale, and when she looked me in the eyes, I could see that I had made her quite angry. Watch where you're going, stupid. I apologized to her, not wanting to try and start something with some random woman I just met, and I walked past her and walked into the restroom. At this moment, I was just so laser focused on peeing since my body was quite literally shaking. My body would be shaking for another reason, however, because while I sat there in the stall, I hear that woman's voice calling out to me and asking me where I was hiding and how she wasn't finished with me just yet. I could then hear her trying to open each of the bathroom stalls as she slowly but surely making her way down toward me. I don't know why I felt like I did, but something in me said that if I tried coming out, I was going to be in a world of trouble. At this point, I raised my legs up for her not to try and see me, and now I texted my parents, telling them there is some crazy lady inside the restroom looking for me. Almost like clockwork, my dad decided to call me, and stupid me had the ringer on for some reason. She was going to get to me either way, I thought, but now my dad has just sped up the process. The lady now started to violently shake at my door, telling me to come out and how she just wants to talk to me etc etc i peeked through the small opening of the door hinges and i swear to you i can see she's holding some sort of small knife i was basically crying at this point looking up at the ceiling and asking to myself why why is this happening to me it's not fair i now screamed as loud as i could which does get a reaction from the lady as she tells me to shut up and how it's hurting her ears yeah no kidding Honey, are you in here? I heard the restroom door open, and then I hear the crazy lady suddenly start to panic. My mom would now let out a scream as she relayed to me in that moment that the crazy woman ran up to her with the knife. Thank God, however, that she didn't try stabbing my mother or attacking her, as she says the woman just ran past her and then out of the gas station. Finally, the whole strange encounter seemed to have been over, but I was beyond frightened. It did take me quite an effort to get out of that restroom, but after washing my hands and hugging my mom ever so tightly, she escorted me out. The man at the cash register was now on the line with the police and asked if we could stay to speak to them. I was too scared at this point, so my mom joined me in the car and had it locked as my dad waited for the police inside the store. Two police officers would arrive and they would take my statement as others went to look for the woman. I pretty much just sat there in the vehicle with the window down, my mom hugging me the whole time while I gave my statement. No less than 10 minutes later, the police officers reported that they found a woman matching my description. Well, what do you know? They would ask me to identify her, and I told them, yes, that was her. She pretty much gave me a death stare and started spewing random nonsense at me. Needless to say, we left that gas station, but I was still really terrified to enjoy my time at the Harris Casino. Since that scary incident, I have now started carrying a knife with me, and my pepper spray on my keyring is there too, just in case I need to use it for emergency situations. But luckily, I have not had to use any of them just yet. I just hope none of you ever have something like this happen to you, because it's not fun whatsoever. The Walmart Stories video that you released about a week ago had a scary story that reminded me of an encounter I had in the fall of 2007 when I got out of work. This takes place in Los Angeles, California. Anyway, I was employed at a now defunct community center and that afternoon I had to stay for overtime as there was going to be a special event that would be held the following day. Basically, I had to stay for meetings and paperwork I don't want to bore you with all those details, but basically I needed to get some gas, and while I could go to the gas station that's closer to my house, I didn't think I was going to make it, so I chose to fill up my car at the gas station that's just around the corner. So as soon as I pulled up into the gas station, I began to hear sudden yelling and obscenities. Turning my attention behind me, there is a naked man running in all directions, holding one of the largest knives. I had ever seen in my life. I guess it would be more better to describe it as a machete of sorts. I freaked out and I went back into my vehicle 
as the naked man ran over to me and then jumped on top of my vehicle, showing his entire junk in front of my very own eyes. As if things couldn't get any worse, similar to what happened to one of your subscribers in that recent Walmart Stories video you released, this man began to hit the hood of my vehicle with a machete, which would then cause dents and deep scratches to form. Now, I know many of you probably are yelling at me from the other side of the screen and saying, Girl, why don't you just press on the gas and leave? Trust me, I look back on this and I wonder the same exact thing. Why didn't I do that? But I was just so frozen in fear that while my brain was telling me to get going, my body was stuck. I know there's a word for this phenomenon. Maybe one of you can leave it in the comments. But anyway, while this seems to be going on for an eternity, more people start yelling at this crazed man to knock it off, as he then starts chasing others. Police pulled up to the gas station a couple of minutes later, and what I witnessed next, I do also have to give a listener's discretion, so if you are squeamish to certain details, you might want to turn the audio down or skip this part. Okay, you good now? Well, after giving the man commands to drop the machete multiple times, he gets super close to one of the police officers, and they shoot the man dead. One of the bullets, I recall, was a headshot, because his body suddenly went limp, and then he just fell like a large log. I would be traumatized by seeing the bloody and gory sight in front of me, and even when a police officer came to check up on me, as well as others, I couldn't stop shaking. I would seek therapy after this, and I did miss out on work, but after a while I would get better and move on with my life. Now, whenever I tell people this story, I don't get so shaky or scared. It's more so I look back and I think, wow, I really saw somebody get shot and killed, and I still believe to this day that if he went after those police officers, he might have tried stabbing me or others. Oh, and by the way, the man with the machete, from the news story that would be shown on the television, was a homeless man that was on drugs, which would explain as to why he acted in such a violent fashion. I still believe to this very day that if it wasn't for a good Samaritan, I may not have ever seen my family ever again. I understand that that does sound very cryptic, but it's a reality and I hope that in some way it can help teach others. So here's what happened. 2011, Oklahoma, and I'm returning back home from visiting my mom and dad who lived about 5 hours away from me. I was running low on gas, mostly my fault for not stopping when I should have. I was forced to make a stop at a gas station in the middle of nowhere at about 10pm. There's no one else around it seems for miles. The only signs of humans are at the gas station itself, the cashier inside, and what I assumed was his vehicle, and a van that was parked by itself in the dark corner away from the building with its lights off. I almost considered just leaving right there and then, as I was getting these really bad butterflies about the isolation, but I knew my car wouldn't last until the next refill of gasoline. I had to suck it up. So I go inside the gas station and hand the attendant some cash, and he tells me it's all set, feel free to pump it when ready. I was going to ask him if perhaps he could keep an eye on me since I was feeling pretty nervous, but I chalked my nerves up to just being a big old baby and not wanting to bother him, and I say nothing and return outside. One thing I had noticed was that van from before had moved from its previous location, and now it was a lot closer to my vehicle. Its lights are off. Well, that's strange. But I won't be here forever, I just need to do this real quickly, and vamoose, I'm on the road again. So I begin filling up my vehicle, humming some music in my head and trying to relax my nerves, and suddenly, I hear a familiar voice coming from behind me. Hey, look out behind you! I turned around, and I'm not even joking with you. There's someone in a ski mask that's sneaking up behind me with a huge knife. I could see right behind him, one of the van's side doors had been slid open. Well, as I see the gas station attendant pumping a shotgun and telling the guy with a ski mask to drop the knife, they then do a complete 180, and like a kid being caught red-handed, they hop back into the unmarked van and then drive off. I was now standing there, at a loss of words. 
What in the world did I just experience? It would take a few minutes of an adrenaline dump and confusion to leave my system, but I would determine that I was about to be kidnapped in the middle of nowhere. If it wasn't for the nice gas station attendant looking out the window and seeing what was happening, I do believe I would have been taken right there and then. Unfortunately, the cops were of almost no help, and I never did get a decisive conclusion to what happened to these guys in the van. However, this event has taught me one very valuable lesson. If you're leaving a major city, make sure you're prepared. Ensure your tank is filled with gas. And if possible, don't travel on your own. I don't live too far from a gas station. It's literally just down the block from me. And I like to go there on Friday nights to get snacks. Mostly things like Cheetos and a soda like Cherry Coca-Cola as I sit down and listen to scary stories videos, mostly from The Creepy Fox, Let's Read, and Swamp Dweller. A couple of years ago, I decided I was going to buy myself a couple of scratcher tickets because I was feeling lucky. I scratched the first one and I got nothing. The second one gave me a free ticket. This was a $10 ticket. I picked out another one and I was going to scratch it there, but in that moment my bowels were getting ready to burst. So I ran home to use the bathroom and then got distracted when my girlfriend called me after that. I spoke with her for about 30 minutes and then I remembered, oh wait, I have that scratcher ticket I got earlier. So still on the phone with her, I scratched that lotto ticket and to my surprise I'd won $300. I remember jumping for joy as my girlfriend congratulated me on the win. I told her that tomorrow night when she got off at work, I would take her to a nice restaurant to eat and she was really excited about that. Well, all I needed to do was get the cash and I was set. This is when my night was about to turn from exciting to downright horrifying in quite a fast instant. So I put on my shoes once again and head out my door at around 9.50pm. Same employee inside the gas station welcomes me and asks if I was back for more snacks. I told him I wasn't right now, but I did say I had gotten a winning ticket, and he gets excited for me as he hands over the $300. So far, so good. With the money in hand, I now start to walk out of the gas station store, but there was a problem. Almost as soon as I walked outside, a random man with a hoodie on walks over to me. I don't know why I got so nervous, but I walked past him as I gave him a friendly nod, but he comes up to me and grabs a hold of my arm. I saw that money the cashier gave to you through the window. Hand it over and there won't be a problem. My dude literally pulls out a knife and puts it up to my face and says he doesn't want to do this, but if I didn't do as he said right there and then, I was going to get stabbed. Well, what could I really do? I struggled to move, but this guy was massive in comparison to me. I'm 5 foot 8, 160 pounds. He's over 6 foot close to 250 pounds. Well, I did the only thing I could really think of in that moment. I believe it was more so my emotions taking over. I yelled at the top of my lungs, and this man suddenly grew nervous. I do think since the area we are in was empty and nobody was at the gas station at the time, he was hoping this could be a quick mug and go. Somehow, the scream worked, because of all times I had no idea that a neighbor was out for a run with his two German Shepherds. I wasn't able to see him at first because the building was blocking my view of him. But anyway, my dude just lets go of my arm and takes off running as he jumps over a wall like a cat and then disappears into a nearby alleyway. My neighbor went over to me, the dogs barking like crazy, and asked if I was okay and what that was all about. I told him that I was being mugged, but seeing him with the dogs was enough to get the guy to back off and run away. I was so grateful for his presence, and I would report the scary incident to police. And about a week later, they caught the guy. Turned out this guy was a violent criminal who already had a past history of crime, including dealings with illegal street drugs. I guess if there was one good thing that came out of this, I was able to help the police get this guy off the streets. I would take my girlfriend out to dinner, but I did stop going out by myself at night since I had that constant fear I was going to get mugged. 
It sucks because we live in a pretty safe neighborhood where there's really not much crime. It was just that one outlier of an incident that really affected my brain even to this day. Back in elementary school in the late 90s slash early 2000s, my grandma used to pick my brother and I up from school. We lived a 15 minute walk away from our school and looking back on that time, it really does remind me of better times. But there is one memory and one very specific experience that I look back on that even as an adult today, I'm always having to cement this into my own kids heads. That whole notion of stranger danger and how you need to be aware of your surroundings at all times. I know it's something that is said a lot and it gets annoying, especially since it seems like this isn't every single story, but it is very true. So anyway, I remember this scary experience of mine very well because my brother had gotten sick with a fever that day and he had to stay home from school. That meant that it was just me and my grandma that were walking home. It was a sunny and cool mid-60 degree afternoon and about halfway to the house, I asked my grandma if we could stop by the gas station because I wanted to pick up some pretzels and a Snapple from the little shop. She said sure, no problem and we approached the gas station. It was the afternoon rush and there were quite a lot of vehicles that were currently filling up. Something I did notice as we approached the front doors was a homeless man. He asked us for money and my grandma being the kind woman she was gave him a few dollars and told him to have a blessed day. He said thank you and then looked down at me telling me how beautiful I was and also how he wanted to give me a huge hug. He didn't get the chance to do it because my grandma moved me along, not that I would have let him. Anyway, we walk over to where the chips are and I see my pretzels that I had been looking for. Then I heard somebody say my grandma's name. It was one of her best friends and both of them now strike up a quick conversation, catching up like they hadn't seen each other in years. You just gotta love how friendly grandmas are. Anyway, I decided I was going to walk over to get myself that Snapple and then I would be right back so we can go ahead and pay. I turned the corner and looking through the refrigerators was that homeless man from outside. I assumed that he had come in to grab himself something as well with the money my grandma gave him. Oh, did you come to say hi to me little one? I recall the homeless man said, to which I ignored him and then go to grab my drink. Now remember that whole be aware of your surroundings deal and stranger danger? Well in my effort to get my Snapple and not paying attention to my surroundings, I suddenly got lifted up from behind. Surely it wasn't my grandmother as she's not really that strong. Well it was the homeless man and now he starts shushing me quiet as we begin making our way over to the front door. As I look back, it does feel like everything went into slow motion. You know, now that I'm writing this out, this sounds very familiar to what one of your subscribers described in your McDonald's stories video, the most recent one. I won't spoil it in case you haven't listened to it yet, but you'll hear the similarities with us being grabbed. Anyway, I did finally start screaming and a man who entered through the front door stops in front of this would-be homeless kidnapper and asks him what he was doing. He now places me down and starts saying, Oh, she's my daughter. This just is what we like to do for fun. Isn't that right, sweetie? With all that might I had, I kicked him in the shin and then go running over to my grandmother, who is just walking over wondering what was even happening. Basically, long story short, the homeless man ran out of the little gas station convenience store and my grandmother started to freak out, not that I could really blame her. It wouldn't be until later that night that I had a breakdown when that whole incident finally caught up to my young mind. I think what makes this so scary is just how nonchalant the homeless man was, how he just grabbed me there in the rush hour while nobody was looking as he waited for his opportunity, then for him to say I was his daughter before booking it out of there? I mean, that's really insane. Anyway, we did report this to the police and thank God they catch him and the details that are revealed to us sometime after is what makes this even more horrifying. This hadn't been the first time that he tried to kidnap somebody of that young age. 
but luckily he was placed behind bars and it was a major talk in my town, but I grew up and eventually moved on with my life. So, yeah, the whole notion of stranger danger and being aware of your surroundings is huge and I recommend if you have children of your own, don't lose sight of them. I get it. You may live in a relatively safe city and you might even know people, but that's where criminals thrive. They blend in like a wolf in sheep's clothing, and they take advantage of opportunities such as this one. Of course, my grandmother felt really bad, but I don't blame her at all. It was my fault for being impatient and running off without her. But then again, I shouldn't be so hard on myself either. Why should I have to worry about being kidnapped? I don't know. I guess sometimes it takes these sorts of things to learn a lesson, and that's why I pass the lesson on to all of you. Please, make sure to stay safe, and please, watch your kids. I was deployed in the Middle East back in the mid-2000s, and I finally had the opportunity to return home for Christmas. I had an amazing time with my family and friends. My one buddy Eric, I hadn't seen since I was in high school. We caught up like the brothers from another mother that we were, and he introduced me to his girlfriend Christine. She was really nice, and I was happy for Eric, as they seemed really happy together. Fast forward to the day before I have to go back, I called up my buddy Eric and asked if he had some extra time to hang out. Maybe we could go get a bite to eat or something. Well, he told me he would have loved to, but he had to work at his job that same night. At the time, he was working at a Shell gas station. Well, I did want to see him one last time, so I tell him I'll stop by and say hello and bring you some food. He was ecstatic about that, and so around 8pm I went to one of our favorite Chinese restaurants to pick him up some food. I knew he was working and he wouldn't have had much time to speak to me anyway, but at least I could stand by the front counter and talk for a little bit. After all, I wasn't going to be there for hours since he knew I had to go home and sleep early. Anyway, I got to the Shell gas station close to 9pm and it's pretty quiet there as I hand over his food and we chat for a couple of minutes. Before leaving, some more customers walked in and it's at this moment I forgot that I had the extra hot sauce I'd been given in the cup holder in my car. Eric loved hot sauce and I just couldn't leave him without it. I told Eric that I was going to be right back and he now gets to helping out some customers as I make a quick trip outside. When I walked up to my vehicle, all of a sudden this man who had been hiding in the darkness pops out like a jack-in-the-box of sorts and then silently comes up to me and says, Hey, hand over the keys to your car. I had to do a double take when I heard him say that since I thought maybe this was some sort of prank. Yeah, sure buddy, but whatever. I need to get going. I then saw him fiddle around with something in his pocket. Now, with all of my training, my senses told me that he has a weapon on him. Thus, before this guy even gets a chance to reveal it, I grab his arm and then put him into an armbar hold as he now screams and tells me to let go of him. I told him to drop whatever he's holding onto in his pocket or the arm was going to come right off, and he does as I say, with a small pocket knife dropping to the floor below. I was correct in my assumption. Creep was really going to try mugging me for my car keys. Well, needless to say, I kick the knife under the car, and then I shout at one of the customers who walked out of the store to call the cops saying that I had a bad guy apprehended. Needless to say, with the guy still in the arm hold, I walked up closer to the storefront, and that one guy I told to call the cops stays with me until backup arrives. Naturally, they're confused at the sight they're seeing, but when I told them to look under my vehicle, indeed, they do see the knife. Cops actually also did a search and they found him to be in possession of drugs. I saw and overheard this myself. Anyway, talk about a very surreal matter of moments for things to go from quiet to crazy in an instant. I do have my training, sure, but even if you aren't in the military, I recommend you take self-defense classes. Scary things can happen in an instant, and you need to be prepared to act in a moment's notice. So don't let the creeps out there be the winners. Show them who's boss, and you'll make it out, I swear. Also, 
I did get that hot sauce to my buddy Eric. It's not like I had to fight off a guy with a knife or anything. You're welcome. I just left a friend's birthday party and I was super exhausted. I also noticed that I was low on gas and I needed to make sure I had enough gas to get to work the next morning. This was a Sunday night going into Monday morning. Now I had a couple of options. I could wake up early and go to the gas station and fill up my car, or I could just do it now since I'm already on the streets anyway. I sighed as I look at the little warning on my dashboard and decide, eh, what the heck, I'll just do it now and give myself an extra 15 minutes to sleep in the morning. So I pull up to an Arco gas station, and there is no one there. Sweet, just my luck. I pulled up to the pump closest to the exit and now put my card in so I can begin pumping the gas. I was a couple of gallons into the process and I see a silver Dodge Charger pull up behind me. I sighed again since I'm the kind of person who hates it when somebody has to park right next to me when there are so many other spots to pump gas in. I blame this attitude on my dad who always acted that way whenever he would get upset with other drivers. But I rolled my eyes as a man jumps out of the driver's door and then instead of pumping his gas, he walks up to me and asks how my night was going. I told him it was fine, trying to keep the conversation short, and then he compliments my eyes, telling me they're really beautiful. I could already tell and feel where this was going, so in a snarky tone I tell him, why don't you just take a picture, it'll last you longer. Not that I really wanted some random nobody to do that but I was already feeling pretty tired and not wanting to have any of this person's nonsense. He takes a step back and apologizes, but then almost immediately asks if I had any plans after this. I didn't respond to that. Instead, I place my tension on the pump, and this causes him to suddenly get angry with me. I was talking to you. Show some respect or else. Yeah, because I like to go up to random women in the middle of the night and then get upset when they don't pay attention to me. Get over yourself, dude. I was upset, but visibly starting to shake a little bit because he now tells me that he was willing to ignore my behavior if I just apologized with my body and spend 15 minutes of my time with him. I was sick and now told him to get lost and that I was going to call the cops. That did get him to back away as he then gets into his car. Strange considering I thought he was going to pump gas into his vehicle. The creep literally waits for me to finish pumping gas and now starts to follow me out. I was so scared because I was near my house and I didn't want him finding out where I lived. That was the last thing I needed, some random creep trying to break in when I was asleep. However, I was sure that if he tried doing that, my dad would have shot him dead because there's so many guns in her house. Anyway, I thought in that moment I should just drive over to the police station, it's actually pretty close by. Well, what do you know? Creep follows me. But then I think he caught on because when I pulled up into the police station, he just pressed on the gas and floored it out of there. I went inside and told him to the best of my ability what had just happened, as well as a description on the guy and the kind of car he was driving. To my surprise, they did tell me that they were going to look into it and to leave my phone number, but there had been no updates whatsoever. I haven't been back to that gas station since, and any time I see a silver Dodge Charger, I get the chills, thinking that it might be him. Hey everyone, so that was the final story for today's episode. A huge thank you to these 10 incredible subscribers who took time out of their lives to sit down and write in their stories and share it here with the Creepy Fox family. It's always a huge honor being able to feature your stories and anytime we're able to do these exclusive scary stories videos, well, it's always a good time. But hey, a few things. First, I wanted to go ahead and give a huge thank you to every single one of you who has been watching these videos. We just hit 97,000 subscribers. That is a huge, huge number. And to every single one of you, again, thank you. Uh, even just recently, uh, since the beginning of December, now where I'm recording this January 11th, but uh, I've been seeing a huge, huge increase in uh, subscribers coming in. So thank you very much for watching, for sharing it with your family and friends. And uh, 
you know, helping uh, get the Creepy Fox family growing. I mean, there is a possibility we might be able to reach the big 100,000 this year. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully, YouTube's not like, ha ha ha, yeah, you're not going to get there and they'll suppress the, <laughs> they'll suppress the channel. But um, I, I love the fact that you guys are kicking the algorithm's butt. Uh, you guys have been showing up in huge numbers now and uh, sharing the videos and, and I see that so especially on the last two videos on the Walmart stories and the McDonald's stories you guys have like I said you've really been kicking that algorithms but uh, let's keep that momentum going and I think like I said we're going to reach that 100k in no time but uh, let's see what else oh yeah um if you do have a scary story to send in uh, make sure to do so uh, that's one of the reasons why you've been getting uh, all these videos uh, this past week. Uh, I think this is, it's been a while since I've done a video, or I guess a week of video uploads, where all these stories videos have contained uh, brand new stories that have not been featured on YouTube. Um, in these past few months, I've either done one or two uploads a week, or if I have done several uploads in a week, they're norm they're normally compilation episodes so um yeah like i said it's it's been really nice it's been a nice little fun thing being able to do all these uh brand new stories videos so we still have about uh the, i think we have about three we can make about three more full length episodes with uh with all brand new stories so again it is a nice little buffer zone but uh I don't want it to burn out all uh, just yet, so let's try to keep those uh, subscriber stories coming in if you do have a story, and uh, yeah, we'll help, it'll help a huge amount to be able to uh, give you guys uh, continued brand new stories videos uh, for the future to come. But yeah, that was pretty much it for today's episode. A huge thank you to my channel members. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Linz, Maribel, Medeusatil, Silent, Dread Archive, Sean, Corey, Jen, and Cara Flanders. Of course, a huge thank you to all the regular viewers who watch the videos, leave likes, comments, subscribe, and share it with your family and friends, and all that good stuff. But yes, I'll go ahead and see you all on the next all new episode. Until then, take care, and have yourself an amazing day.